Okay, let's go ahead and do example three with related rates. So, um, again, if you uh, haven't seen the previous videos and if you want to get a copy of this worksheet here, um, check the video description and you can find a link there to download this. You can save it, you can print it uh, if you want to follow along on the video. So, um, example three, a six foot tall man walks away from a 22 foot street light uh, at a speed of eight feet per second. Uh, what is the rate of change of the length of his shadow when he is 19 feet away from the light? Uh, and also, at what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? So there's uh, two things here we're being asked to find, right? So um, anyway, we read the whole problem. Now we go to our general process here. Step one, draw, uh, draw and label the picture. So uh, what do we have going on here? We have a 22 foot street light and a six foot tall man is walking away from it. So let's go ahead and put our street light uh, over here. So here's our street light and uh, it's 22 feet. Okay. And uh, we'll just assume the street light makes a 90 degree angle with the ground. Okay, unless told otherwise, we could just assume that. So now uh, we have a guy uh, standing over here, and he's about six feet tall. So this is totally not to scale, but that's okay, I guess. Um, so he's six feet tall, and uh, the street light is shining down on him here. So that's going to connect there. So um, that's what we have here. So instead of drawing a man here, um, let's just make this a straight line. So really, what do we have here? We have a, a triangle inside of another triangle, right? So, and what's the height of that guy? Uh, six feet. So he was six feet tall. Um, now, we have to label some other stuff here. Uh, the distance between the man and the street light, let's call that X. All right. And uh, this distance we're going to call S for shadow. Okay, because uh, here's the guy standing right here, here's the street light up here, uh, the light is shining down, and then here's the shadow. Okay, this light casts this shadow on, this, uh, on the ground here from this guy. So, uh, this distance here is S for shadow. Alright, um, so that's pretty much our picture. Uh, we might have to label a little bit more later, but for now, uh, let's go back to our process. So, step two, using mathematical notation, make a list of what you are given and what you want to know. So what are we given? Let's come up here and write down what we're given. All right, a uh, six foot tall man walks away from a 22 foot street light at a speed of eight feet per second. So that's something that we're given, uh, eight feet per second. So what does that mean? Um, this guy is walking away from the street light. So the street light is staying here. This guy is walking away from it. Uh, he's walking in this direction, basically. He's walking away from it. So that means uh, X is changing. Okay, so we have uh, X, the distance between the street light and the guy, it's changing at a rate of 8 feet per second, because that's how fast the guy is walking. So uh, dx dt, okay, the rate of change of x with respect to time, is 8 feet per second. Now, um, is it positive or is it negative? And we go back to our picture and we see, oh, okay, if the guy walks away from the light, that means x is increasing, okay, because the distance between uh, the light and the guy, it's getting bigger, right? X represents that distance between the light and the guy. And if the guy is walking away from the light, then of course the distance gets bigger, right? So uh, dx dt should be positive, because as time goes on, the guy moves farther away from the light, meaning x increases, it gets larger. Okay, so dx dt is eight feet per second. Um, and just a quick side note, if the guy was walking towards the light, then x would be getting smaller and this would actually be negative, right? Um, but, you know, in this case, he's walking uh, away from the light. The man's walking away from the light. So dx dt is positive because x is getting larger. All right, anyway, um, just something to be very careful about. You know, do we take a positive or a minus sign here? Um, and in this case, it's a positive. So um, anything else we're given? Well, 22-foot street light, and uh, the guy is 6 feet tall. So we already labeled those in the picture, so we don't have to draw them. Or rather, we don't have to write them down here. Uh, so that's what we're given, and what do we want? <clears throat> um, we want two things, actually, right? We want to know uh, what is the rate of change of the length of his shadow when he is 19 feet away from the light. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, the rate of change of the length of his shadow. The length of his shadow is given by s, right? The length of his shadow is given by s, and we want to know um, what's the rate of change of that when the guy is 19 feet away from the light. So, in other words, we want ds dt, and when do we want it? We want it when uh, the guy is 19 feet away from the light, and his distance from the light is measured by x. So when x is 19, uh, that's when we want this. So we want ds dt 
when x equals 19 feet. Okay, and uh, also at the same, so it's not uh, explicitly mentioned, but this just means at the same time we know when x is 19 feet, uh, at what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? So that's kind of tricky, but think about, um, you know, the tip of his shadow is going to be moving with respect to the source of the light, okay, uh, or from the basin. So here, um, here's the tip of his shadow, all right, and the source of the light is up here, but we're going to measure it from the base, okay, because the shadow's on the ground here. So um, this whole distance here, x plus s, let's call that y. So this whole thing will be y. All right. So here's the tip of his shadow over here on the ground, and then all the way over here, here's the base of the light. Okay, so from the base of the light to the tip of the shadow is what we're going to measure the change of. Okay. Um, so when we say uh, at what rate is the tip of his shadow moving, okay, um, you know, at what rate is it moving with respect to the base of the light source here? So what we really want to know is dy dt. Okay, because here's the tip of his shadow, and then here's the base of the light source. So um, at what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? Uh, we also want dy dt. And uh, we want it when x equals 19 feet. Okay, okay so that's um, step two. Using mathematical notation, make a list of what you're given and what you want to know. All right, now step three, uh, write down the relevant equations. And there, again, they'll usually be geometric formulas. So um, what kind of setup do we have here? You know, we have uh, a right triangle sitting inside of a larger right triangle, right? So um, remember from geometry, that's uh, similar triangles, right? What we have is actually similar triangles. And, uh, you know, similar triangles have that nice property, you know, where uh, their sides are in proportion. So um, what we can say here is the side here, this side of the smaller triangle uh, divided by this side of the larger right triangle is the same thing as this side of the smaller triangle divided by this side of the larger triangle. Okay, so in other words, um, s divided by s plus x, okay, or really it's y, okay, this whole thing is y, but um, let's just leave it s plus x for here, because it'll be uh, easier for the next step. Okay, so s divided by s plus x uh, is the same thing as 6 divided by 22, right? So that's just a, uh, that's just a geometry thing, uh, similar triangles, okay? And uh, 6 over 22, that's the same thing as 3 over 11, right? We can uh, take out a common factor of 2 here. So let's say um, s over s plus x equals 3 over 11. All right, so we have that. Okay, so um, are there any other relevant equations? Well, not really. There are some other things we probably could say, but they're not really relevant. Um, this is pretty much all we'll need for this problem here. So that was step 3, write down the relevant equations. Now step 4 implicitly differentiate both sides of the appropriate equation with respect to time. Um, now again, before we do that, um, let's go ahead and uh, manipulate this a little bit. Okay, so this is the equation we want to start with, but let's manipulate it so that we have the appropriate equation. So um, let's cross multiply, basically. So uh, let's come up here, and we have s over s plus x equals 3 over 11. So we're going to multiply both sides by 11 and both sides by s plus x. So then 11s equals 3 times the quantity s plus x. Okay, so we just cross multiplied here. Um, now we distribute the 3, so 11s equals 3s plus 3x. Okay, so then uh, subtract 3s from both sides, so 8s equals 3x. Alright, now from here, uh, we could take a derivative here, but let's go ahead and come up here and see. We want ds dt, right? That's the first thing we want, ds dt. So let's get s by itself, because then when we take a derivative, um, we'll just have ds dt by itself. So divide both sides by 8, and then s equals 3 over 8 times x. All right, now this is the equation that we want to take a derivative of. So let's come back up here, All right, um, and then s equals 3 over 8 times x. So now, um, now we can do step 4. Okay, now we have our appropriate equation, so we can implicitly differentiate both sides of it with respect to time. Okay, so when we do that, uh, what's the derivative of s implicitly with respect to time? Well, that's just ds dt. Okay, and then how about over here? Um, x is also a function of t implicitly, right? x depends on time. Okay, as time goes on, x also changes, right? So uh, 
we're going to have dx dt, but what about that 3 8 Well, it's just a constant multiple, so again, if you take a derivative with a constant multiple, uh, the constant multiple just stays there. So this is 3 8 times dx dt. All right, so that's step four. Um, implicitly differentiate both sides with respect to time. Now, uh, five, step five, plug in the known quantities and solve for the unknown variable. Right? And then uh, if we need to, we have to go back to the original equation to get more info. But actually, we're not going to need to do that here. So um, here, we want to ds dt, right? And we want it when x is 19 feet. Right? And uh, we're told that dx dt is always 8 feet per second. So let's take dx dt, plug that into here. So then uh, ds dt equals 3 over 8 times 8. So then uh, the 8's cancel, and then this is actually just 3, 3 what? Uh, 3 feet per second, right? So those units, they're given um, in the problem. All right, so notice, um, did we use the fact that x is 19 feet? Oh, well, no, we didn't, right? So if you think about it, it kind of makes sense that ds dt is going to be constant, because um, the guy is walking away uh, from the streetlight at a constant speed of 8 feet per second. Okay, so his speed here is constant, so it kind of makes sense to think that the length of his shadow um, is going to be changing with a constant rate too. So basically ds dt is 3 feet per second. So that's um, the answer to the first question. And um, there's not really enough room here to write it, but if you wanted to answer that in English, you would say uh, the length of his shadow is changing at a rate of 3 feet per second. So again, uh, the length of his shadow is changing, or increasing, you could say. The length of his shadow is increasing at a rate of 3 feet per second. Okay, it's increasing at a rate of 3 feet per second. Uh, that's probably important to mention the word increasing. All right, so that's uh, ds dt. Now we also want a dy dt. Okay, and we, again, we want that when x is 19 feet. So this is actually going to be a little bit simpler. Um, how is y related to x and s? Well, y equals x plus s, right? So that's pretty straightforward. Um, y equals s plus x. All right. So that's actually kind of going back to uh, step three here, right? Write down the relevant equation. So now we want a different quantity, so we have to go back to step three and see if we can use a different equation that's going to be useful to us. So for this uh, second part here, this is the only equation we want to use here. Um, now we want dy dt, so we have our equation here. We could just take a derivative of this, so that would be step four, uh, implicitly differentiate. So then we get dy dt equals ds dt plus dx dt. All right, so let's uh, separate this here. Okay, so um, what is ds dt? Well, we actually found that. Okay, it's 3, right? So this is uh, 3 plus what? What is dx dt? Well, we were given that in the very beginning. It's uh, 8, right? 3 plus 8. So this is um, 11. So in other words, uh, dy dt equals 11 feet per second. And again, the units are important. We've got to have the units on the answer there. OK? So that's uh, the answer to the second part. And if you wanted to answer that in English, I'm kind of out of room here, so I won't write it, but I'll say it. Um, at what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? Uh, his shadow is moving at a rate of 11 feet per second. Okay. Uh, the tip of his shadow. The tip of his shadow is moving at a rate of 11 feet per second. And again, for this one, uh, the length of his shadow is increasing at a rate of 3 feet per second. And here, the tip of his shadow is moving at a rate of 11 feet per second. All right, so that's example three um, with related rates.